Thank you. I'm tired just uh, hearing the <laughs> introduction. It's my pleasure to be back here at the Pacific Institute in the new location now. This is my first visit to your new location, and I'm just so pleased that you have grown and you have more room in which to build your programs and to attract more people to your ideas and share your thoughts. Uh, and I hope that that growth and continues for many, many years to come. Um, I'm very much interested in uh, the Gulan movement. Uh, I'm very much, uh, I guess, uh, encouraged by his um, thinking and thinking of those who are his disciples and followers. I'd like to see some of that continue to broaden, not only in the United States as it is, but throughout Turkey and the Middle East as well. I think that the, the Gulan movement has a great deal to share uh, w with people who live in uh, that part of the world. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, in part, at least we'll start there. We'll start back in the ancient Middle East, back in Mesopotamia, Sumeria, back where the rivers Tigris and Euphrates met and uh, entered the Gulf of Persia. That area was where Abraham was born. According to um, the Hebrew Bible, Abraham's family lived in Ur, uh, which is one of the ancient cities along the river banks, and uh, that's where he grew up. Um, years later, he left Ur with his family and journeyed across what is called the Fertile Crescent, that is, the area between the mountains and the desert in the Middle East where there was water and an ancient pathway and trade routes and eventually made his way into what we call Israel today, to the land of Israel. And there he settled. So one of the first things I want us to be aware of is that Abraham was an immigrant. He settled in an area that was foreign to him, essentially, with his family and had to make his way into that society of that time. And my sense is that what you're going to be hearing in part from our uh, speakers today is that all of the religions that we're going to talk about, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, had to do very much the same in the course of their times. And their leaders had to find ways of uh, growing and teaching in cultures that were not always accepting of them. The second thing is that Abraham was a successful immigrant. That is, eventually he and his family took root in the land of Israel and got to know his neighbors and developed cordial and cooperative relationships with them and eventually cooperated with uh, the Canaanites and the other con uh, communities around in defending their territory against attack. So he became one of the community, separate nonetheless. And I think in some ways you're going to hear that that is also the experience of our three faiths tonight, especially in the United States. And uh, my hope is that our speakers will talk about, well, what does that mean now? You know, is, uh, is Judaism of uh, Orange County the same thing as Judaism in 15th century Syria, or Judaism in 8th century Babylon? Or have there been some significant changes along the way that we ought to be aware of? The same thing is true for Islam. The Islam people practice today the, uh, is not the same as the Islam that the immediate successors of Muhammad practiced in their day. There have been enormous evolutions, challenges to be met as uh, Muslims moved from country to country to country, and especially as they crossed the big pond and moved to the United States of America. My hope is that we'll be able to sense a little bit of that and share a little bit of that today. For Jews, Abraham was the first Jew. 
for Muslims and Christians, in many ways, Abraham was the father of their traditions as well. Not the first Muslim, not the first Christian, but the early Christians, Jesus and his followers, and the early Muslims, Muhammad and his disciples, all looked back to Abraham and to Jewish tradition in some ways as the foundation on which they built their early history, their culture, their ideas, their theology, and so on. And my hope is that we'll share something of the similarities among the faiths as well. So we're very much alike in some ways. I have a wonderful time when I'm with my Muslim friends trying to find out which restaurant we can eat in, okay? I have to have kosher food, they have to have halal, so you know, we have a lot in common in that regard. I say all of this as introduction because I don't want us to focus entirely on the differences. That's too often the case. We talk about how we disagree with one another. We talk about what our relatives and friends and compatriots in the Middle East are doing one to another, and so on and so forth. I don't want us to neglect that. It's important to share that information and try to understand what the differences are. But I like to broaden the conversation to share a great deal more that we have in common as well. And I want to reiterate what our uh, Vice President said in introducing our program. Dialogue is not about sharing ideas, not only about sharing ideas and convictions and theology and beliefs. It's about respect. It's about honoring a person who is different from you. It's about saying, yes, you're different from me, but we can work together somehow, nonetheless. It's not an intellectual process. It's a process of getting to know one another so that eventually we trust and admire one another. And that's one of the goals I hope we will achieve tonight. We have some outstanding speakers that are going to bring wonderful information to your attention. And I look forward to hearing what they have to say. Our first speaker is going to be Father Tom Welbers. Father Welbers has been a Catholic priest for nearly 50 years, most of that time serving in parish and college campus ministries. He also has professional degrees in theology and liturgy, as well as institutional management and continues avidly to explore pastoral theology, scripture, liturgy, and interfaith relations. He has a passion for sharing insight into our Christian heritage with others who are not necessarily of his faith. And he enjoys leading pilgrimages of Christians to great centers of civilization in the Middle East. You'll hear him talk, I hope, and perhaps even pass out enough, a brochure if he has one. His next journey is going to be to Istanbul and uh, is going to follow uh, many of the Christian, uh, the journey of Paul, the, the, the journey of others uh, in that part of the world. But that part of the world is the Muslim world in which we're now all engaged. So I'm delighted to welcome him to this pulpit. Father Welbers, please come forward. <laughs> 